Alright, first off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, the true name of the Father, Yahweh Shai, the true name of the Son. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Jameis, Great Millstone, who feed us in this truth continually. Salutations to the Akim out there pushing this word in our sincerity and in truth, you know, hoping for the, the day of the Lord to come. Alright, this is the Bakabash from the Jameis Jamaica camp. You now, um, this lesson will be um, focused on how social media is used to influence and to manipulate popular opinion, right? As a platform for propaganda, you know, and, and social engineering. Because we, we live in a society right now, you know, where everyone, inc inc including me, you know, including a lot of the men in GMS, we, um, we, we, are, we are steadily using social media, you know, especially the younger generation, they are addicted to, gen to, to social media. And we're going to show that in this video, that social media is actually a legitimate form of um, addiction, right? It's, it's not a substance addiction, it's a psychological addiction, and it, 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 it affects the brain in the same way cocaine and, and, drug, and drug use and alcohol use affects the brain, right? But before we get into all that, we're going we're gonna to show a few examples, read a few articles to show how social media is used to, to influence, right, to influence social um, behavior, right? So we're going we're gonna to bring that out, right? Just give me a second here. For some reason, this decided to start play. All right. There we go. All right, so let's get into the lesson then. So this first part here, this first article, was written on the 31st of October 2017, so very recently, right? How social media manipulation is affecting your life today. And it was written in, on the website The Drum by Stephen Waddington. He's a partner and chief engagement officer at Ketchum and visiting professor at Newcastle University, all right? So it says, bug, bots and rogue advertising are you being used to manipulate social media. It's why we must, we must face greater. The networks and technology that promise to de democratize media and improve public discourse are creating threats to the democratic process. New research is shining on a spotlight on this issue and shows how little we know about our behavior, about how our behavior is being shaped. Evidence emerging from the EU referendum in June 2016 and the U.S. election in November 2016 points to the need for stronger governance on social media platforms. In my view, social media needs to be held accountable to the same rules and regulations applied to mainstream media. And the thing is, mainstream media is also used to, to, um, to shape behavior and public opinion. Right? So it's not, just, um, it's not just, just isolated to social media alone. The thing is, social media is a, is a, is a more effective platform with, with, um, to be used to shape public behavior or public opinion because more people are, are, are consuming social media are consuming content on social media than they do on mainstream media if you if you notice if you do certain certain research especially with um with with with, with youtube youtube is doing a thing now where, where it's asking you random uh, um random questions to fill out certain random questions on surveys while you're browsing through youtube one of the questions that popped up asked me um, how do you consume content for the for the most part on YouTube? Right? How how what platform do you use to watch you know YouTube content? And I clicked on cell phone and I realized that se over seventy percent of respondents clicked on cell phones also. So that means that most people are consuming so are, are consuming media on the phone through the social media app um, through the YouTube social media app, right? And a lot of them are, are referred there. From Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or any other social media platform that directs them back to um to YouTube, right? Or the videos are embedded in those other social media platforms, right? So it says the promise of social media is that we'll be able to connect with each other and have an equal voice in public discord discourse. Facebook has achieved this the reach. It connects 43 million voting UK citizens via its mobile app and website. It's a very intimate form of media that reaches us via our devices reinforced by the signals from the peoples in our networks, right? And here, here is one of the, um, 
one of the important points that I want to bring out. It says Facebook's news algorithm reinforces our existing biases. So if you notice, especially men in GMS, if you notice when you go on so certain social media websites, so for example, let's start with YouTube. YouTube would only suggest videos that it, th that it, it thinks you are interested in based on your, your viewing habits. So there's an algorithm on each social media app, whether it be the YouTube website, the YouTube app, the Facebook page, the Facebook app, the Instagram app, the Twitter app, all these things have algorithms in them, right, that, that, that they use to introduce content to you based on your, based on your, um, based on your, your, your previous viewing habits or your, your previous consumption of media, right, but what they also do is they use trending topics Right, topics that are trending out there on social media and introduce them into your feed so that you 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 um you start you know following them and, and the majority of people that 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 are in the world are nothing no right and they are easily influenced by the opinions that pop up on social media. Therefore if if a certain for example um the, the, the example that they give in the in the article here right it says um the EU referendum in June twenty sixteen Right, the opinion of the majority of the people in in um in the UK to decide to leave the um the the the, the, the to like decide to leave the EU, right, were affected by social media posts, right, and then the US election in November of last year, right, was uh, was also influenced strongly by social media posts by either um news channels you know that that are pushed from, from by 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 government officials you know to sway public opinion right so let's continue with the article it says head to your facebook feed right now and try to find an article that challenges your political opinion you'll struggle news feeds create media bubbles it's why so many people in the uk misjudge the outcome of the eu referendum meanwhile facebook's networks enable like-minded people to join together in groups or communities around issues or topics right so that, that's that's basically it right for this article i'll post the rest of it each of the each of these articles i'll post you know so brothers can read the, the entirety of it all right but let me just bring out this this other paragraph here it says the arguments around fake news are well rehearsed there are two main purposes for fake news the first is propaganda the second is profiteering right and one of the for example one of the the the, the, the current propaganda that's going right now is that Iran is the main supporter of terrorism in the world and Iran needs to be um, eradicated. Another one is that North Korea is a bully. Um, another one is that um, Syria, the Syrian president um, Bashar al-Assad is um, is a legit illegitimate leader and needs to be, be taken out. You know, things like these are, are, are propaganda that are spread, you know, and they are spread easily through social media platforms right let's get to the next article all right so this article right is from the guardian and it was posted monday the 19th of june 2017 so recent article again facebook and twitter are being used to manipulate public opinion right so it says propaganda on social media is being used to manipulate public opinion around the world a new set of studies from the university of oxford has revealed from russia where 45 percent of highly active twitter accounts are bots to taiwan where a campaign against president tai zing wen tai ying wen involved thousands of heavily coordinated but not fully automated accounts sharing chinese mainland propaganda these studies show that social media is an international bat battleground for dirty politics. The reports, part of the, the Oxford Internet Institute's computational pro propaganda research project, co cover nine nations including Brazil, Canada, China, Germany, Poland, UK, and the United States. They found the lies, the junk, the misinformation of traditional propaganda is widespread online and supported by Facebook or Twitter algorithms. Right? At, a simple, at their simpler end, techniques used include automated accounts to like, share, and post on social media networks. Such accounts can serve to game algorithms to push content onto curated social feeds. Exactly. So if you have a certain bot account, which is, um, which is an automatically 
um, operated account. It's not a person operating it. It's an algorithm, right? And that bot account, right, will be programmed to like, share, right, and uh, um, certain certain content on the internet, right. So therefore, certain content will end up being trending and being shared a lot, and then that, that will be pushed into your feed, right, into the feed of, of people who do not have bot accounts, and then it will seem that those those um those are hot topic issues. Right, so then the algorithm that are in place for Facebook, Twitter, and the other um, and the other websites will then automatically suggest those those to you, right? And the the the, the, the manipulated the, the, the malleable masses that are easily manipulated will then try, try start to follow these things because they think that it's popular, right? They can draw out real reason the base between humans in favor of a social network populated by argument and sound bites. And they can simply make online measures of support, such as the number of likes look larger, crucial in creating the illusion of popularity. The researchers found that in the US this took the form of what Samuel Woolley, the project's director of research, calls manufacturing consensus, creating the illusion of popularity so that a political candidate can have the vi can have viability where they might not have had it before. The US report says. The illusion of online support for a candidate can spur actual support to a bandwagon effect. <laughs> right? Trump made Twitter center stage in his election and voters paid attention. Exactly. If you notice even now, right, Trump he, Trump is called a Twitter president, yo. Right? He 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 throws tantrums, he makes um, official public statements and all these things through Twitter. His campaign, his presidential campaign, was mainly focused on Twitter, on that social networking camp, uh, um, platform, right? And through that, right, he was able to manipulate a lot of people, right, through the same, this, this, the same technique that we, we, we've just read, you know, right, through creating an illusion of popularity, right? I don't need to continue this right, right, right here, you know. I mean, we'll, we'll post the article so our other brothers can read as you as as I said before, right? This is another one. Apple CEO Tim Cook says social media is being used to manipulate and divide us, right? And this was posted again recently, November first of this year, so last month. Apple CEO Tim Cook doesn't have a high opinion of platform owning social media and advertising companies, much of which are now embroiled in an ongoing controversy about the Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. election. Cook, in an interview with Lester Holt on NBC Nightly News this evening, said the big issue isn't the advertising targeting the advertisements targeting groups and individuals, but the overall nature of social media as a tool for misinformation and manipulation. I don't believe the big issue are ads from foreign governments. I believe that's like 0.1% of the issue. The bigger issue is that some of these tools are used to divide people, to manipulate people, to get fake news to people in broad numbers so as to influence their thinking. This to me is the number one, is the number one through ten issue, right? And this is just reiterating what we've read on the on the previous two articles, right? Which is true, right? The the the, the especially the governments, right, are using social media as a platform. To influence the thinking and the behavior of the masses, right? And no side is is innocent of this. America is doing it, same. Um, Russia is doing it. China is doing it. You know, everybody that has the, the capability to do it will do it, because that's just how it is. That's that, that's how the world is going right now. People are addicted to social media. So in order for you to reach them, in order for you to manipulate and to affect their thinking, you have to reach them through that 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 um that platform. Right, so let's move on. All right, so this now, what I want to get into now is how social media influences offline behavior, and this this is going into the, the psychological effects, right? Especially um geared towards teens, how it affects your behavior, how it affects your brain, and how it is that we're ad we're a, as a society, you know, on a whole, we're addicted to social media, right? So here it goes then. So this was posted March 31st of this year. So again, recent article. How social media influences offline behavior. And it was posted on um, allsite.com. 
right, which is a psychological, psychology, psychology website. Considering how much time we spend on Facebook, it makes sense that our online activity interactions could affect our, off, our behavior in real life. And researchers are increasingly finding that this is the case for better or for worse. Let's start with the better. A little online peer pressure can spur people to make healthy changes in their lives. Take a study published last week that analyzed data from 6 million users of a fitness app over the course of five years. The app, which track users' physical activity, has a social networking feature that lets users connect with friends and share their data publicly. And it turns out that this feature works. Connecting with other people made users more physically active in their real life. Specifically, the researchers found that creating new connections made users talk, take about 400 more steps a day on average, a 7% increase. Having more social connections also led people to use the app more frequently and to keep using it for longer, right? And the, the, the app developers are using this, 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 this information, you know, to, ma to, to manipulate people into using their app. They, 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 they study mass psychology, right, to a T, to a perfection, so that when they craft and engineer and program their, 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 their social media app, it is engineered in such a way as to get you addicted to it to keep you using it. So what this app has, has done is, is not only give you the tools to exercise and be more physically active, but also for you to socially connect and share your, um, your results and your, 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 your milestones and your achievements so that you will, because the thing is when you share that and people view it and like it, right, you feel better in yourself. Right, because you know people are liking it. Right, if social networking can motivate people to become more physically active. There's a good chance it could make people make other healthy changes in their lives. For example, some researchers have proposed that it could be used for dietary interventions. Of course, social media can also influence people's offline behavior in negative ways. One study found that being exposed to depictions of smoking on social media made made young adults more likely to subsequently take up smoking themselves. Right. And we've talked about this a lot in, um, especially men of GMS, we talk about ta the Tavistock Institute, you know, and other organizations that, that, that orchestrate social engineering on a mass scale. You know, we, we, we talk about, you know, philosophers such as Friedrich Nietzsche, Carl Jung, um, sorry, that guy's name again now, right, Heiger, you know. Hegel, H H W Hegel, you know all the all these men, you know Karl Marx, all the all these men studied, you know, behavior on a mass scale and how people how people are easily influenced by public thought, you know Nietzsche called it the, the herd mentality, you know we just read read an article that that, that referred to as as a bandwagon effect, right? When 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 you when you can create an illusion that a thought or an opinion is is a, is a popular one or is heavily supported then people are more likely to follow that opinion because as social beings you know we 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 are um, we are inclined to follow what the majority is doing whether the majority is doing something good or whether the majority is doing something bad so social media then is 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 used as a platform to 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 influence the way how people think on a mass scale this is, this is another reason why Jake is so fucking dumb because what's being pushed on social media is, is, is total crap, it's total nonsense. You have bitches shaking, shaking their ass, posting half-naked pictures. If you, if, if, when I scroll through, through Instagram, most of the feeds that I see are, mo are most of the, 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 the memes. That's, that's another thing that's, that's exploding on social media. The memes are targeting, are, are, are pushing feminine dominance you know are are um supporting sluttish behavior you know supporting um the feminization of men you know so these are the things that that have altered the um the thinking of our of our young people today and not just the young people but even the older generation to the point where where um the social thinking on a whole has has completely changed Right, and these these are one of the tools that the so-called white man uses, you know, to change the thinking 
of people today. And the thing is, the, the majority of people don't even realize that they're being influenced, don't even realize that they're being manipulated, you know, because they're just, they're just addicted, for lack of a better word, they're addicted, right? So, before I, I, um, I read this next article, I want to play a video, you know. It says, um, five crazy ways social media is changing your brain right now. One third of the entire world, they've clearly had a major influence on society. But what about our bodies? Here are five crazy ways that social media and the internet are affecting your brain right now. Can't log off? Surprisingly, 5-10% to of internet users are actually unable to control how much time they spend online. Though it's a psychological addiction as opposed to a substance addiction, brain scans of these people actually show a similar impairment of regions that those with drug dependence have. Specifically, there's a clear degradation of white matter in the regions that control emotional processing, attention, and decision making. Right? Because so you see what that says? It's a clear degradation in the region of the brain that controls attention, emotion, and decision making. Right, so it basically it makes you it makes you fucking stupid, yo. You become more docile. Your decision making skills are gone out the window. You can't reason. Therefore, there 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 is no there is no logic anymore to, to society. It's just following what's trending. Right, your attention span is gone. Right, you're 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 on an emotional high when you are taught to be on an emotional high. Right. Social media provides immediate rewards with very little effort required, your brain begins to rewire itself, making you desire these stimulations, and you begin to crave more of this neurological excitement after each interaction. Sounds a little like a drug, right? We also see a shift when looking at multitasking. You might think that those who use social media or constantly switch between work and websites are better at multitasking, but studies have found that when comparing heavy media users to others, they perform much worse during task switching tests. Increased multitasking online reduces your brain's ability to filter out interferences and can even make it harder for your brain to commit information to memory. Like when your phone buzzes in the middle of productive work. Or wait, did it even buzz? Phantom Vibration Syndrome is a relatively new psychological phenomenon where you think you felt your phone go off, but it didn't. In one study, 89% of test subjects said they experienced this at least once every two weeks. It would seem that our brains now perceive an itch as an actual vibration from our phone. As crazy as it seems, technology has begun to rewire our nervous system, and our brains are being triggered in a way they never have before in history. Social media also triggers a release of dopamine, the feel-good chemical. Using MRI scans, scientists found that the reward centers in people's brains are much more active when they're talking about their own views as opposed to listening to others. Not so surprising, we all love talking about ourselves, right? But it turns out that while 30 to 40 percent of face-to-face -face conversations involve communicating our own experiences, around 80 percent of social media communication is self-involved. The same part of your brain related to orgasms, motivation, and love are stimulated by your social media use, and even more so when you know you have an audience. Our body is physiologically rewarding us for talking about ourselves online. But it's not all so self-involved. In fact, studies on relationships have found that partners tend to like each other more if they meet for the first time online rather than with a face-to-face -face interaction. Whether it's because people are more anonymous or perhaps more clear about their future goals, there's a statistical increase in successful partnerships that started online. So while the internet has changed our verbal communication with increased physical separation, perhaps the ones that matter the most end up even closer. Alright, so basically what this, this video is showing is how, you know, as a, as a culture, as a people, we've become addicted you know to social media especially when it comes to talking about ourselves you know the, the dopamine released you know to, to 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 reward us for using social media so that's why you know it's it it feels like an itch to always want to take up your phone if you notice if you walk if you if, if, if you walk through through the city you see a lot of people on their phones if if, if you go on campus at the university campus and you sit down you see Majority of people are there on their phone. I, I'm I'm one of those people who are guilty of that. You know, once I sit down, you know, the first thing I do is check my phone. When I wake up in the morning, you know, the first thing I do is check my phone. You know, and the, these these it's not a coincidence. You know, the, these things were studied and 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 planned. You know, and 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 implemented in such a way as as to get people to do certain things so it's it's not it's it's, it's not like it's it's a coincidence that, that people are addicted to their um their their social media devices right so let's get a few scriptures you know to just um you know wrap up the point you know hopefully this, this lesson is not too long 
This is Psalm 64, and I'll start at verse 5. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of slaying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? Right? And social media is a way in which the so-called white man lays his shops privately. Right? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward parts of every one of them and the heart is deep. Right? Because your another thing is your social media usage creates what's called a social media profile about the way you think. You know, there are algorithms out there now that can predict, you know, the the way you will you will think, the way you will act, you know, based on your social media consumption. So, you know, the so-called white man uses this to create a profile of you. Right? And all this will be connected in the in the, in the internet of things, you know, about you. Right? This is um Second Corinthians two and verse eleven. Least Satan should get an advantage of us, right? For we are not ignorant of his devices, right? So this, this, the purpose of bringing out this lesson is to get brothers and you know the few sisters out there who are watching and anybody else who, you know, comes across this video, to, to not be ignorant of the um of the the devices, meaning the evil thoughts, you know, of the um the elite, which is the so-called white man Edom, Esau, according to the scriptures. You know what he's truly planning right and what's the purpose of social media it's, it's not just there as a, as a as a means of entertainment as a you know it's there for a purpose right so as men in this truth you know we have to be vigilant so the scripture says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour right let's look up a couple words here in the scripture just to um just for the purpose of edification, right? All right, so this is the um, the word for sober, right? Up then. Strong's G, 3525. Nafo. Nafo. All right. To be sober, to be calm, collected in spirit, to be temperate, dispassionate, and circumspect, right? To be discreet, right? So that, that's that's pretty much it, right? And then the last one I wanted I wanted to bring out was um vigilant, right? Let's let's bring out this word vigilant, and it says to watch metaphorically, to give strict attention to, to be cautious, to be active. To take heed, lest through remission and indolence some destructive calamity suddenly overtake thee. So we, we, through the spirit, you know, we have to remain, you know, vigilant as to what's what what's, what's going on around us. You know, what what are the the the, 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 the devices or the plans that the so-called white man has in place, you know, to manipulate and use us, right, and to to, to pull us out this truth, right. This is Ephesians chapter five and verse. Verse 15, it says, See then like, that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, and social media is a form of wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Right? Because not just we have to consider the fact that there are also elements of witchcraft at work, you know, when it comes to these, um, the or social media use when it comes to the information being propagated on the internet you know so we have to then you know wrap ourselves in the spirit you know to 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 to, to be a cloak against all these things yo right so with that i hope this lesson was edifying and again you know for giving me the spirit to do this lesson you know double honors to the apostles and Elders of GMS, salutations to the Akiyamodi, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.